In the last video, we talked about congruent triangles. And the way we showed triangles were congruent was if all three angles were congruent and all three sides were congruent. So now we're going to explore, is there an easier way? Is there a shortcut from doing all six parts? All right, so what we're going to be looking at are these six examples today. And are any of these shortcuts? So notice that I only have three parts of the triangle that I'm looking at rather than all six parts. The six parts being three angles and three sides. So first, let's look at this first one where I have three sides congruent. All right, so that's this one right here. All right, so think about... If I had three sides, and you can even pause the video and do this with um, three different, like a pencil and a marker and a pen. So if you had three sides of a, just three uh, segments that have to stay the same length, can you make a triangle in any other way other than, for example, like if I did this one, could I create a triangle with those three segments in any other way other than this way? I mean, yes, I can rotate it around and things like that, but I'm going to be, I'm only going to be able to make one unique triangle. And that's really what I'm looking for when I'm trying to find a shortcut. Is there a way to guarantee that these two triangles will be congruent to each other without knowing the angles? All right, well, again, if you play around with it on your own, you'll see that you can only put those together. Even if you move them around, you can only put them together um, in one way. So like this angle, the way this one connects with this one has to be the same way this connects to this one. So there's only one way to put those to make a triangle. So side, side, side is actually a shortcut we can use to show that triangles are congruent. All right, so please make... Uh, note of that so that you can have that for your proofs. The next one, side angle side. Notice in this one that I have two sides that are congruent in each triangle. I'll make this one green. And the angle that we're talking about is the angle that's in between them. That that touch both of those sides. So I'm not talking about, like, say, this angle. You see how that black angle, um, its, its side is the blue, but it's not, the green is not touching it. So I'm not talking about that angle or the other angle. I'm talking about the angle in between them. So if I have that, again, if you play around with possibilities, there's only one way to make sure that um, that is a triangle. So if I kept this constant and this constant and the angle between them has to be the same, there's only one way to connect those segments and that's with that third side. So this is another shortcut that I can use is side angle side. Angle side angle, so now we have two angles that we know. So I have that angle and that angle. And notice that the side that I have touches both of those angles. Okay, so it would not be angle side angle if I had, say, like this side. This side touches the green angle, but it does not touch the blue angle. All right, so that would not be a, an okay for angle side angle. So if I'm doing that, if I have angle side angle, so this side has to stay the same length, and these angles have to be the same, then when I extend this, however long I have to extend that, because these are going at the same angle, these are going to create the same exact triangle. So angle side angle also guarantees that I have congruent triangles. So that's another shortcut. Side angle angle, um, a lot of times people write that in the reverse, angle angle side. That means that I have two angles, just like we previously did. But notice that the side that I have is not in between them. So I have this side, or I could have the other side, but not, not this side. That would not be angle, angle, side. That would be angle, side, angle instead. 
So we're, we're not talking about angle side angle. We're talking about two angles and a side that's not touching both of them. So if this is the case, if this has to stay the same, and this angle has to stay the same, and this angle has to stay the same, because the edge of that segment is fixed, then those dotted lines have to meet in the same spot. So again, we're getting another situation where we have a shortcut. Side, side, angle. So now we have one angle, and then the two sides that we have are not, they're both not touching the angle that we had. So this is different than the one above. You see how up here we also had two sides and an angle, but up here the angle touched both of those sides, right? Here the angle is not touching both of the sides. So I wanted you to know, notice the difference. So in order to look at this, I have a different graphic. So if we have this, so notice what I have here. I have my angle. That's my angle, angle A. And AB is a side. That's congruence, okay? So basically, I have another side. Notice how this side BC is not touching angle A. So what happens is, is I can make a triangle that looks like this, that obtuse triangle. So I have angle A is fixed. Or I can make BC come this way. So I could have a triangle that looks like this. So here's my angle A again, and then here's my AB side that's fixed, but this BC could be here. So do these two triangles look congruent? No. So are they always, is that always going to happen? No, it's not always going to happen. I could, you know, make this angle so and make the side short enough so that it would work, but what we're looking for is Am I guaranteed to have congruent triangles? So what we just drew was a counterexample of when that would not work. All right, so there's a graphic. You can see that how that third side can swing and make a, either an obtuse or an, an acute triangle. So we're not guaranteed to have congruent triangles with side-side angle. And if you read that backwards, it's a bad word, so that might help you remember to not use that one. <laughs> All right. So we can't use that one. What I will say about this one, though, is in your notes, I do want you to write that side-side angle cannot be used, so make sure you have that written down. But I want to talk about a special case, and that's with a right triangle. So with a right triangle, if I know that I have, this is called HL, and the HL stands for hypotenuse leg. Okay, so what we're talking about is the hypotenuse of those right triangles are congruent and one of the legs, it doesn't matter which one. So you can see how this looks like an angle side side situation. However, this one we're guaranteed to have it only because this angle is right. So we are gonna be guaranteed, remember how we said these two angles have to be um, complementary. So these angles are gonna have a special relationship whereas any random triangle won't. Okay, so we're going to end up having a side angle side situation. Also, too, with a right, a right triangle, we could do the Pythagorean theorem. And so I would know for sure that this side is congruent to that side. So that's why this, this is one special case where side side angle works. So we don't call it side side angle, we call it hypotenuse leg. And that's to emphasize that that only works in a right triangle.
time. So you can add that to your list of shortcuts, HL. And then now the last one we have to try is angle, angle, angle. So if I know all three angles are congruence, then would those triangles be congruent? So let's think about that. If I draw a triangle like this, okay, and then I draw another triangle with that same angles, are those two triangles congruent? No, this one's a dilation of that one. They're not the same size. So angle, angle, angle means they'll have the same exact shape, all right? They'll be the same type of triangle, but, um, but I won't have congruent triangles. So like this could be even equilateral where all of these are 60 and all of these are 60, right? But the sides are different. Um, lengths, so they're not congruent. So angle, 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 you make sure to cross that off your list. We cannot use that. So to summarize, we have four with the sides and the angle. So side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and side, angle, angle. And then we also have that special case one, that HL. So those should be shortcuts that we're using in our proofs. So now what we're going to do is do some examples of how can we apply this and do a, a proof even. Okay, so in, this, in these kinds of problems, what I want us to do is figure out, are these triangles congruent? Which shortcut are we using? And we're going to write a congruent statement. So in, the, in this diagram, this first one, we have sides, two sides congruent, and then the angle in between. So that's like SAS, and that was one that worked. So I know these two triangles are congruent. So when we write our congruent statement, we want to make sure that we're writing it correctly. So angle B, BIG, so BIG, I have to make sure I list the next triangle in that same order. So that would be FAJ. Okay, please be careful with that. You don't want to get one like that wrong because you're listing the letters in the wrong order. All right, let's look at this next one, number two. I have all three angles congruent. Is that one of the ones that, that was a shortcut? No, angle, angle, angle is not. So we would say these are not congruent. Okay, angle, angle, angle is not a shortcut that can prove triangles congruent. All right, let's look at this one. We have an angle, two angles, and then a side, and that side is not between them, right? It doesn't touch both of them. So that's like an angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle. And that was a shortcut that worked. So we want to write our congruence statement. So they went O, O, P, and N. So we want to do the same way here. So O had the double tick marks on the angle, so that would be D. So we would do D, W, E. D, W, E. All right, let's look at this one. This one has all three sides marked congruent. So that would be side, 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 and that was a shortcut that worked for our congruent triangles. So F, L, P, if I follow that, that F to L is that triple, that three tick marks. And then I'm going to go to the double tick mark. So that would be from V to O and then to O to R. Do you see how I figured that out? Because these are rotated. They're not oriented the same way. So it might help to trace that out. So you see how I trace the three and then the A, okay, or the two. So that would be V, O, R. That's my congruent statement. So Pause the video, see if you can figure these two out on your own. So check yours, make sure that your letters are in the exact same order, and make sure that your shortcut reason is correct. Then you can try, pause the video again, and try seven and eight. So on number seven, it might have been tempting to say, oh, it's angle, 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 so that's not a shortcut. 
but they also gave you a side. So they gave you four things, really. So because they gave us the side, we can use angle, side, angle. And that extra angle that we needed, that we had there, angle A and angle S, that was extra information that we didn't necessarily need. Okay. And then uh, number eight, just make sure you're doing that in the same exact order. So now let's do a proof. How can we use this in a proof? Well, we're going to do the same thing that we normally did. Look at our given information. So WY is parallel to XZ. So again, when they tell us things are parallel, we want to be looking for those four special pairs of angles, like in alternate interior angle, alternate exterior, consecutive interior, and uh, corresponding angles. They also tell us that angle Y is congruent to angle X. Something that might help you is to label when these um, angle W and angle Z are split. I'm okay if you label those with numbers so you can write those out more easily. So we're trying to prove that W, Y, Z, these two triangles are congruent. So we would need at least those shortcuts that we were been talking about. So we already have an angle that's marked congruent. And hopefully you were thinking about how those parallel lines can help us. So if I trace these parallel lines and then use that diagonal as the transversal, you can see that angle 1 and angle 4 would be congruent, okay? Not 2 and 3. Don't put 2 and 3. We would have to know that the other sides are parallel, and we don't know that. So we know angle 1 and angle 4 would be congruent, so that's two angles. And then that side in the middle, that transversal, WZ, is going to be the same side for both triangles. So WZ is going to be congruent to itself, really. Why would it be congruent to itself? That's the reflexive property. So I know we haven't really used that one yet, but here's a good example of why it's helpful to have that one. Because this is the same in both triangles, and that's how we express that. So this, these two are going to be marked congruent. These triangles are going to be congruent because we're using angle, angle, side. So when you do your proof, you want to make sure you're showing how you're getting all three parts of your shortcut. All right, so we want to make sure we're showing the two angles and the side that are congruent before we use that shortcut. So obviously the first one, we're stating the given. And notice that this was one of our angles from our angle angle side. The angle Y is congruent to angle X. The next thing we said was that angle 1 and angle 4 were congruent because of those parallel lines. So we would say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. All right. And then the reason we knew that was because they were alternate interior angles. Remember, I don't put converse. I'm not showing lines parallel. I'm showing angles are congruent. So I've got another angle there from my angle, angle, side. Notice that I don't have to go in order either. If I'm using angle, angle, side, I don't have to first list that angle and then another angle and then a side. I could have said the side next, and that's okay. So my third thing that we talked about was that WZ is the same in both triangles. So I can say WZ is congruent to WZ. I know this might seem like a stupid step or something that's not needed, but we do need to show that that's our side that we're using for angle, angle side. It has to be listed. And that's just the reflexive property of congruence. So now that we have all three parts, once you've said that, then you can say, oh, now these triangles are congruent, and you have to make sure that your congruent statement is correct. I'm assuming, since they had us prove that, that they have their statements correct. And then our reason is the shortcut reason, angle, angle, side.